My Gavan and Melonine, and well met indeed. I'm Arachir Galadirthan, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer as we continue as Anduin. Episode number three, our army in Dwinberg is about ready to move out, although we're going to end the turn first. And our army in the north just proved that Framsburg is a tough nut to crack, and that Gundabad's not going to get it any time soon. My thinking um, is very much that we're going to defend in the north and take Dol Guldur. Uh, and then at that point we will shift focus and move north. Goblin Town, as has as we expected, has not been reclaimed by the Misty Mountains, or Moria, sorry, and I don't think they will attack it for a very, very long time. You'll note that Kamath Bryn, or the Rudawa Uplands, is held by nobody. And so until when Moria get that, that is when we have advanced warning that Goblin Town might need more than one guy in it. But until that point, we will leave it with one guy in it. As our culture slowly grows, and we slowly build some buildings there. But for now, I think we are ending the turn, unless I need to do anything with Radagast. Oh, he's lost He's lost influence owing to the... Head over to the dwarves Impossible. and talk to them for the, in the meantime. Could, as you wish. We'll get them on side as well. Uh, oh, and Imladris. We could do with talking to Imla Imladris. Because then if we move on Kamath Brin, then we could get trade rights with Imladris. But you can't trade through a rebel region, I don't think. You need to have a connection... Oh, no, no, I think you can, because trading, getting trade rights with even far away nations will boost your trade to some extent. So I think they do go through rebel regions. Uh, Gundabad come again. But this time, remember, we have we a reinforcing a army in the ship uh, coming up the river, which will help. Bjorn's Halls can again get the Hunter's Guild. <laughs> Gundabad. Oh, there's the Moria army that, lo that lost but didn't get completely defeated. Oh, we got the dirt paths in Fenom. That's fantastic. I think we should probably start looking to build a mountain watchtower. Um, we'll get the first one banked in, at least. Goblin Town got its carpenters. and There was suggestion that the mountain watchtower should be tied with the garrison script, but that's a load of an unnecessary and additional scripting that I just don't think really is worth the payoff. So it's not been done. Oh, you have very worthwhile mines. Very worthwhile indeed. Uh, how much money do we make? A thousand not very much. I think for the meantime, we'll go for the smaller buildings. So get a leather worker, get a, um, a grain exchange, and then we'll see where we are after that. Right, so Gundabad. No, 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 not Gundabad. We'll go for Dwinberg first. So the army can move out, but do we head for the Narrows or do we head for Roskabel? I want to go for the Narrows, if I'm honest. I think that's a better way to go. Yeah, let's talk to the dwarves first. Trade rights, alliance, map information, military access. Nope. Right, trade rights on its own. You don't even want trade rights. What is the problem with the rest of the world and me? <laughs> do we have a mission to do anything there? No. Um, right, we're worrying about this first. If Roskabel is too close to Dogledor, to my mind, if we can get the narrows first and curl down that way, I think that's probably better. That's what we're going to do. We'll leave a Veil unit behind. We'll build a watchtower on our way through. Yes. This tower will Can't get the Bjorning over the lands. And then here's With the narrows. Honor, the town's around there somewhere. Tomorrow. Don't get yes, any recruitment in there, though. If we start yes, the next turn with 800 gold coins, we'll pop Gleowine back and get a Bjorning unit. Speaking of Bjorning units, we have two more to come yes. down. We can go no further today. Our money is dropping right off. You probably will again hear the cat in this episode. She's just all over the place. Because I'm off. All, I'm not at work this week, so I'm able to record in the day. And in the day, she just spends all day meowing and us wanting more food. And so that's what you will unfortunately get. Cause Jessica and I are in the same room. Right, the army this time is much bigger. Gaznag comes. Mountain Guard. They're a good unit. They're a, and a, certainly a match for the skin changes. Um, otherwise, though, three archers again, but this time he's got raiders. He's got he's just, that's just a big army. <laughs> now, if we can get that lot to support, um, then we should be all right. But do we attack them or do we wait for them to attack us? Hold at the wall while that army moves up to support. I think that's probably a better course. Personally. Meithelberg, you're not doing anything. Our port wouldn't be a bad investment, I don't think. Um, oh no, an apiary homestead again. Uh, let's try and get a carpenter's hut in there as well. Right, you're moving off. Everyone's moved off. Let's see what Gundabad do and then gauge our reaction on that. I think it would be better to let them assault the city. Which doesn't need to be repaired because we've repaired it. 
we got our Veil unit. We've got Bjorn in there this time as well, so our army will be better. And we've got them in support. I, th I think we can do it. I think we can do it. But that is a big Gundabad army. Gundabad, it's just... Gundabad obviously buck the trend of orcs so much. It's so easy to look at that small army and think, oh, they're orcs, it's fine. And then, But then you remember they're Gundabad, and actually they are strong warriors. Um, no, I will control that army. Right, here we go then. For the second time in as many Must episodes, we're courage, defending Framsburg. We march into battle. But this time Bjorn is with us, Fastrid is with us, and someone called Bwent is with us as well. That's a cool image, isn't it? I think that's meant to be Eskaroth with the Lonely Mountain on the far peak in the centre. Right, they're coming in on a different side this time, and they're bringing a siege tower and a ladders with them. But we've got three towers this time, and we've got this l wonderful plateau. This battle map is just brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Right, all three of you then are going to find a way to go up there. Um, can I position you in any way to stand up here, first of all? It baffles me that the game doesn't let you move. Like The game really struggles with these battle maps because it's like if I can draw them on the floor why can't they stand where I can draw them it just doesn't make any sense to me um, right and then the stores are going to probably get shot at an awful lot but I don't think we want them on the walls because this time the walls are going to be contested so we'll get them off the walls our cavalry this time can run outside it's not going to do anything but it's better out there than in here oh you could go on the walls actually you won't do anything other than die, but you can go up there. And then Bjorn and the Veil, vale, you're going to hold down here. Create a kill zone again. So our archers will be lined up here. We'll have one there, one there, and maybe an arch unit there, actually. And then the stores should go there to fire over. Yeah, I think that's probably better. So we'll send an archer over here. There we are. All right, start the battle and then let them all register and then pause. So, archers over here. You're fine essentially where you are, but just sort of turn around a bit. And then archers here. One of you, I want to come up this path. Come on, do as you're told. You know that you can walk up this path. There you go. You go up the path, and then the last one is going to go on this fantastic little hill here. It just looks like it's designed for a catapult, doesn't it? Imagine assaulting this town with a dwarven catapult here. It'd be the stuff dreams are made of. All right, cavalry, you're going to go outside. Veilsman, you're going to form a defensive wall and you're just going to hold. And Bjorn, you just cannot die. You absolutely cannot die. And then the last thing is the stores. Cut yourselves across there. Right, everyone's in position. You guys over here, let's get a run on, please. Right, yeah, you are all going to just sort of pop up on the while the enemy's attacking hopefully that's the plan all four of you are archers as well that's insane get over there get over there and then you come on Bwent come on Bwent is the cavalry out oh the cavalry's very much out whoops out and dying do you think you could stop the siege tower coming in if by attacking those raiders how are we behind the walls everyone's in position archers you may now start opening opening a fire. The towers will be on our side because we've got troops on the floor. The towers will do a lot of damage. They will help here greatly. And our the sacrifice made by the Aetheod uh, horsemen will not be forgotten. Changes in the course of battle, but defeat seems almost. But they are dying, and they will die. But it's the kill zone here that we're interested in. As soon as a unit comes through, we'll set all the archers to fire into this spot, and then we've got the store sheriffs as well. And our art units are hauling Krev. <laughs> That's a phrase I haven't heard for a long time. It's time for butcher's work. They're running over. Does Bjorn look like the rest of them? The general has a little, as you can see, there's the little wolf head. He's the only one that does. That's how he stands out. Oh, and Bjorn's the same. It would help me greatly, Bjorn, if you would come and stand at the back. Um, I'd really appreciate that. Don't do arcing shots on units that are standing by the gate. Curses! The enemy are battering down our gates! Fire over the back to those ones over there. Look at that, it's a dream as an archer. I can't imagine you're actually throwing stones. They can't do arcing shots. You can set the way that projectiles work, you can set them up so that they aren't affected 
that they only have a certain trajectory that they can actually follow. So you can turn arcing shots off. For example, with crossbows, we could make it so that crossbows simply cannot do arcing shots. The enemy's ram has but breached invariably, the gates. it often means that they then rarely ever fire because they have really specific firing requirements and it can be almost impossible to get them to do anything. So generally speaking, it's better to not be that restrictive. But 25% of the enemy has died before they even get into the city, just as our reinforcements are now closing in on that side. The have the walls. But to our defense, or all will be lost. Our defensive units haven't been... haven't come up against the enemy just yet. The stores are firing off, although the enemy seems to be targeting them. That's disappointing. Nice. Nice. <laughs> they really don't do very much damage per volley, but they get 50 volleys, and that's just what makes them just fantastic. Right, and then all of you guys, ah, oh, the Veil units are going to have to come further forward because you can't reach it. And Buent is coming in. But there we are, support has arrived, reinforcements are here, the enemy's coming in and grouping up nicely for us. Although I think you could probably... Oh, I've got the mountain guards out there. Actually, yeah, if you all target the mountain guard, it's about to run in anyway. Um, that one. Stop running. Start firing. The towers should still be shooting as well. We're up to nearly 50% of the enemy has gone down. This is such a good battle map to defend. <laughs> and you can't forget as well, the Anduin are good archers. We do have a good archers. We're not as good as Dale. We're not as good as Elves. Of course, no one's as good as Elves. But we are still good. We're better than your sort of generic archer nation. But then who is a generic archer nation? Ardenaim, maybe, I suppose. Dunnan, Denard Wife. Orcs, of course. The Snow Orcs are actually good archers. Um, they only get a couple of archers. In fact, they only get two. But they're much better than normal Orc archers, and that always helps them out. Don't run away. The battle seems to be swinging in our favour. From such tidings does victory The battle emerge. is absolutely swinging in our favour. I don't know what has paralysed the AI so much, but they've just stood there and taken our shots. And it has lost them the game. We've lost 1% and they're at 75 almost. <laughs> and now our archers over here, it's just open season for the uh, archers of the Vale. I think that's such a cool representation. I know it's a weird thing to think, but the Vale archers, seeing how much better the Greenwood Foresters and Woodman Hunters range is, that the Veilsmen have to go that much further forward in order to fire. Um, it's only a small amount, but and th even just the quality of this unit is so much better than the... Do you all remember the farmer unit that Anduin used to get? I think it was given over to Bree, actually, where it fits much better because they've been changed for Bree as a... Um, they were changed into a... Um, into the, like, ha the, the labourer unit. They wield a, a shield and a hammer now, so they look like blacksmiths that have gone to war. Right, Bjorn, get yourself involved. You guys come out of defence. The stores have taken the punishment, unfortunately. And they're the ones that are supposed to not be attacked. We're meant to be defending the lesser folk. We're Bjornings, for goodness sake. Oh, Bwent. Yes, you can finally close this little seal. Save the hobbits. Here we are. Where's the general gone? Oh, he's in here, apparently. Oh, yeah, look, there he is. Towers are firing into him. Furious Charge. I don't know what Furious Charge does. I need to check on the campaign map. But no, this was obviously is over. It's in the bag. 10% plays 97. They actually got some kills when they came in. I think that's probably actually a good indicator of how good Gundabad actually is when they get into melee. That before we actually melee was actually joined, they lost 75% of their army, and then with the 25 remaining percent, they were able to kill 10% of ours. Although I wonder how much of that was killed by our own hand, in truth. Once the general dies, that fellow over there, um, I think this will be well and truly over. The last few units will break and run. Behold, there how it is. Was 170, we and we killed 1,247. Today. They have four soldiers remaining. Well, at least they fight to the death. 225 kills, Vale Archers. Fantastic. 222 kills, Vale Archers. Also fantastic. Putting in a real stint, our archer units there. Store Sheriff's got 144. <laughs> we just cannot let the Store Sheriff's pass into oblivion. They're in such a good little unit. 
And to be honest, I would take store sheriffs over a normal javelin unit any day of the week. They are so much better. They do one damage, but they are armor piercing. Um, but one damage. They do one point of damage, and yet they get that many kills. And they're useless in melee. They don't have anything in melee. But they are powerful. Now, we could move out against Gundabad, but I don't really want to stoke their wrath. Because if we attack Gundabad, they might get Last Stand armies involved. Um, Gundabad will get a garrison yes, anyway. It just it wouldn't be a pretty sight. My lord. So I don't really want to do that. Uh, Bwent, can you please go up there and build me a tower? This tower we could always take Yulstone, though. Yes, There's no yes, reason to lord. not take that down. This area is now inaccessible, by the way. Um, there was no need for it, and it confused the AI a lot, so it was it was shut off. So that crossing there is the only one. Your orders, my lord. Um, right, well that was fantastic. Excellent success. And yes, my lord. our army can move on With the honor, narrows. We'll we find Dolgrindor no there. Further, Got those Bjornis coming down. We don't have enough for command. the... Um, I thought we might have enough for getting some mercenary units, but we don't. Um, we could really do with actually making Goblin Town a place where we do get free upkeep. We're creeping up. We're at 6%. Um, but we want the tomb, really. That would be the next thing. The tomb and then the muster ground. The muster ground would give uh, Veilsmen and Veil Archers. And if we then got just a stone circle, which I think we've already got, haven't we? Slave Pit. They've already built that for us. So actually, if we try and get a muster ground here first, then we're then go for the like money making ones and then pop a tomb on we'll queue those up and then we don't have to worry about that town for a while I'm loath to leave so many good generals here though um, I mean I don't think Gundabad will now take Framsburg anytime soon but they might do this what Crockflick is doing and bypass it and take Meifelberg the AI is not beyond that but you one berserker Bjorning head back to Bjorn's halls We'll retrain you, rather than see you die. Oh, the Aether Horseman, you can finally retrain. Brilliant. You're getting me that. Oh, and I made the change in between the last two episodes. So it now only needs a castle to get the tier 2 Aether Stables, which admittedly wouldn't help us all that much because it only gives cavalry. But um, if we were then to push down the Elder Hall line, in fact, we only need that building and then we can get the latest one. I don't think we'll be able to get that building anytime soon, so there's no point even queuing it. But that's all we'd need. But I think then we can end the turn. Didn't need to do anything with Radagast. Yes, we were talking to the dwarves. Did we talk to the dwarves last time, this time? I can't remember. But we need to get an alliance with Thranduil. We need to get an alliance with the dwarves. We need to form a... a, 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 a I don't know, a covenant. A, an alliance, a unity against Dol Guldur. And the elves are critical in that. Although, having said that, we didn't get an alliance with Lothlorien either, did we? Those snooty pointy ears didn't bother either. And we're practically defending their yes, lands. Lord. If not for us, they would be... They would fall. Now, oh, they want the map information, but they don't want the other things. This seems quite and they went for the trade for us, eh? And they just don't want the alliance. No, but I'd rather have one with the elves first. So move you down. But at least we've got the trade rights. That always helps. Um, there's our Bjorning. Oh yeah, it only takes two turns to sail from Bjorn's Halls to Framsburg. That's a, almost a four turn walking journey. Cut down to only a, a two turns on the ship. That's pretty good. Oh, we can get roads in Bjorn's Halls. Look into that. Right, where's the town? Rather than just... Oh, did my, where's my spy? Got my spy, didn't I? You head over there. Your orders, my lord. Yes. Yes, my lord. Hold on, here's a road. A mighty host. This is all narrows. That's narrows. Oh, it must be Your it orders, must be just down lord. there, surely. Making camp here. I can't find the bloody town. <laughs> oh, that Gundabad, you're not actually gonna go for Goblin Town, are you? That would be very yes, disappointing. I don't know what they're doing, really. They've got Dane's Halls, you see. That is held by Gundabad. So even if we took Rakuberg, it wouldn't really shut down their expansion prospects. But we could nip out and take Yulstone. Do we have a cavalry unit? No. Your yes. And we can't get there in a turn, because Yulstone doesn't have any roads. Oh, and because we're pinned in by the Snow Orc army. 
We could easily decimate that Snow Orc army with... If we just take the archers... Your orders, my lord. We shall engage. They've got an archer unit, but otherwise I think we are going to school them. A militia Attack. unit that has a damage of three with its arrows is really good. That's why Vale archers are doing well. R remember that the an, a sort of elite archer for most of the game, unless you're playing as a really unique elven, a really unique archer nation like elves or like the Dunedain, a really good archer unit is six missile damage so when your militia is doing three missile damage that actually is really good but what we're going to do is we are going to uh, stagger our forces so that if the enemy does come we're not all up against them now we did attack them though so we probably for the start we will just have to form a line and walk forwards oh they are going to play ball right so veilsman you don't have to move very far forward, but just send two units forward. Right, like that. And then you guys in the back here will build a little archer formation. Defenders of the forest! And you're in that gap, and then you're in that gap. And then what we will do then is group the whole army properly, like that, and then move it as a group. And if they're going to run away, that's brilliant. They've already lost 6%. We only got one volley off. They do have an archer unit, don't they? There was one snow orc archer in amongst all of that. Yeah, look at the front there. And then they've got some javelins, and then they've got the crappy orc fighters, snow orc spears, and raiders at the back. Nothing to be concerned with. We won't run. There's no need to run just yet. But what we really want to do is focus fire. So the macro, the uh, the micro is going to have to be more on point than usual. Yeah, we can run actually. What the hell? Right, the first units can fire, but I think so can theirs. Yeah, look, we've taken a few losses. But that's fine. 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 Focus them down, focus them down, focus them down, focus them down. You're set to run away. They're going to throw javelins. That's not the end of the world. Right. Um, you go for the spears. And you three. Come over here. They're only going to go for one of you. Don't know who they're going to choose. Go for the spears. You go for those raiders. You're the chosen one. Run, run. Don't worry about the 25 javelins. I'm not concerned about that. You guys turn and focus on them. You, the one at the back. How many of them? 50 made it to our line. That's disappointing. Lost 6%. They've lost 56%. Go on, don't get caught. Don't get caught. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. You're going for them. You're going for them. You're going for them. Point blank on both of those. You're fighting them, which is unfortunate, but necessary. Right, you've curled all the way around, so you can target them again. You can now target them. You're still going to go for them. You two change up and hit those. And you, if you would, run over here. 13 Our raiders made it through. The enemy general. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. And there we are. I think that's everything. Only the archers left. Behold, and it's over. The yes! We lost 117. This mm. is a great but victory. Relatively good across the board, apart from the two that had to run and generals. the one that had to fight. Oh, that's the one that had to fight because they lost 76. So if that was the only one, really, we should have pulled that unit back. 76 is nothing. They're Veil Archers, as you've seen. They're eminently replaceable, and they're really good. I like having a good early tier unit. It makes campaigns, A, obviously a touch easier, but also I think just more fun. It's nice when you have a unit you can actually rely on, and you know you're not just throwing it in thinking, right, that unit's just going to die. Uh, you want a unit that will actually do something before it dies. Prime. 
And we want to harass Gundabad. That's going to have to be the way of it. Glory, honor, victory. So that northern border yes, might get a touch repetitive, but there's little that can be done about that. And then again, Britta. I really don't know where that town in the Narrows is. I would have thought we'd already bumped into it by now, so I'm a bit disappointed. Oh, you actually are going to attack Goblin Town. No! The enemy lay siege to oh, people. bugger off. What is your problem, Gundabad? Right, well, we're going to retaliate and strike at them, then. I'm not going to allow this disgrace. I'm gonna stick you. Now, unlike episodes one and two, this episode has to end in the next few minutes. So I can't really fight any battles, I'm afraid. It might have to be a touch shorter. But I can make up for that with the next one being longer. But what we are going to do, um, if Kruk Kruk attacks us, he'll... he'll. Oh no, we've got Bjorning Spearman. What have we got in there? Veilsman? Any other forces? Ah, oh, Grimbjorn. Yes, Grimbjorn could try and get across. And we've got the poor oh, stores there. Now, what I'm thinking, to be honest, is to uh, pull the army out and go for Yulstone. So we'll leave behind the 57 Veilsmen to battle. and we'll take the fight to them. Sodom. We lose money when we do that. Well, we lose money as well because Goblin Town's being besieged. I don't think the Bjorning Spearmen will hold, and Goblin Town doesn't get towers if memory serves. So it's actually a really rubbish Paradise battle map. And those javelin men will give us some grief, and I don't even know what that is. We know it's not a general, but other than that, who knows what the fact that the army leading that is. But we can't just abandon it in that regard. Even just having a second army will help. Um, but they can't actually get... So they've got to attack. So when we move him out, he has to attack Kruklik, because otherwise he won't be involved in the fight. Because you can't stand directly north of him, which would be there. Um, so that's something that we'll have to do. And then, of course, I need—I do need to attack Maldaf. We can't allow him to pass us by, otherwise it takes ages to get around him. So we'll attack and kill him. But as I say, even though it's slightly shorter, that's going to have to be where the episode ends. Um, I really don't know where that town is, though. It must be there. It must be just about bang there. So we, this is the Narrows. It doesn't go any further that way because that's the East Bite where Brown Boat is. Hmm, I don't know. But the killing Kruklik is going to be hard. But we have to. We can't allow him to take Goblin Town, even for a turn. They might destroy all the buildings we've built. That's so annoying that they sent a pathetic little army like that to Goblin Town when, when they've just lost two huge armies at Framsburg and they're about to use, lose Yulstone. Morons. Anyway, that is going to be where episode number three ends. So fortunately, at least the next episode, I'll be able to comment and discuss any of your comments and reply to any of those that were uh, noteworthy and, and welcome to be replied to on the channel. But until we speak again, dear friends, Navarna den pedemad melonin and farewell.